Hi there, this is Phil with Phil FX and uh, into our week two tutorial here for the school year. And today what I want to do is uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, effects and uh, working with text. Uh, After Effects, uh, it has effects right in the name and it has it in the name for a good reason because one of its primary functions that it's used for is creating special effects. So uh, I'm going to walk you through. This is basically just an intro. Uh, to really delve into effects, we literally could spend an entire semester just on working on effects. But uh, I want to give an intro on some of the pre, uh, pre-built-in pre effects that uh, uh, After Effects has and how you can work with that. And this is really meant to be uh, uh, an intro for today's homework where I really want you to sit down and just play with this. I think you'll have a lot of fun uh, working with the effects and the things that you can do with it. And uh, so it's really meant as an exercise to get you started on how to get out there and just explore. So I got a uh, uh, comp here and I have our uh, template that we use in class loaded in here to get started and what I want to do is uh, let's start out and we'll just create a new solid because almost all of the effects when you add them you need to add them to a layer and uh, the typical way to do that is you just start with a blank solid layer so go up to layer actually select my comp layer new and we'll generate a solid and uh, I'm just gonna call this uh, demo one and it's my comp size that's the thing that you really need to be sure of make sure that it's the size of the comp so I can click here and say make comp size and the background color you don't care about uh, but I'm just gonna say okay so we've got a solid in there and what you want to do is you want to go over here if you haven't clicked on it if you're set here in the standard setup go over here and click on effects because you want that and Right here is our all of our effects, and the one I want to be working with right now today is really just the uh, animation presets. It's the very top one. So let's quick click the twirly down here, and let's go down to synthetics, and uh, let's look at this one called cells. And I can add cells. The, there's two ways to do it because I have the layer selected. I could just double click on this, and it adds it or I can, let me do a command Z and undo that I can take this and just drop it right on top and I get the same thing so what you're seeing here is if we scroll this along we've got an animation and it uh, kinda looks like you're looking through a microscope uh, maybe you're seeing bacteria or something through uh, uh, inside of a microscope and so you see this animation that's going on and the way this is being accomplished is there's essentially a number of effect layers let's scroll this all up so we can look at this and uh, the effect layer is we have an effect called cell pattern one called median one called levels one called tritone and one called ripple and they are added they're added in a specific order so the order is important and the uh, these effects themselves uh, we, we loaded this thing called cells but actually is loading these other effects and if I go over here and let me click in here and type cell pattern you can see there is a an effect called cell pattern under the generate and that is generating a cell pattern so we're using that if I go here and I type median okay median is a noise and grain generator and so you can see that this effect of cell was built up by using these other effects stacked on top of each other uh, I said the order of stacking here is important the way that this happens is this executes is it first creates a cell pattern then it executes this median function then it executes the level that executes the tritone and it executes the ripple so it executes from the top to the bottom if I took the cell pattern for example and put this down here it changes what this looks like all right yeah let me undo that if I take uh, tritone and I put that here uh, that that really didn't change too much if I take median and I put that here that changed a little bit but the order in which these are done are very important if I just turn this off you can see that we get nothing so the basis for everything is the cell pattern and I can go in and I can one at a time turn each one of these effects off by clicking on 
the FX and you can see the effect that each one of these has on the overall construction of our effect. And if you open these up, you can go in and play with the uh, parameters here and you can see that there are keyframes on some very specific parameters like uh, disperse has a value that's been set it's been set to one if I go in and change that value you can see how that changes in fact if I go down here and set it to zero we're not getting much dispersion at all if I change it up to a value of one we get quite a bit of dispersion so going in and uh, I would encourage you to go in and change these parameters and see what kind of effects that they have. Uh, so this was just one kind of uh, an effect. Let's go in and uh, uh, I'll just hide this layer so we don't see it and go in layer new, get a new solid and put that in here. Animation presets, uh, synthetics and let's look at another one. So there's this one called blue bars. So let's look at that and see what that does. You can see here I've generated some uh, uh, flashing kind of a blue bar that's in the background. This might be nice uh, maybe for a, a title sequence, for an intro scene. Maybe you want to put some text in there. Uh, I don't know, maybe you're doing a scene with a disco and you want to put this in the background, you know, whatever you got. Uh, but anyway, it's, it's all done. It's a preset. You can go in there and you can modify these things and you can change the parameters. And more importantly, you can use a lot of these presets to see how initially some effects were done and then build upon these to really what I would like to see you do is create your own effects. Uh, so I mentioned uh, text. So let's go in here and... Uh, we, I want to uh, generate some text. I'm going to take these two layers and just delete them because I don't need them. And uh, the way to generate text is we want to go in and uh, we could just get the text tool and I could just start typing. And that creates an empty text layer. All right, and uh, because of our transparent background, you can't see it. So let's go in and we'll add a new layer. Uh, add a solid. Let me go in and uh, I'm going to make this black. And say OK. And put that on the bottom. And so we can see the text that I added. So here's the text I put in. Quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Uh, if you didn't know it, this particular sentence actually is fairly common. Uh, the reason why it's common is because it has, uh, it contains every letter that's in the alphabet. So it's used very often when uh, somebody wants to go in and they uh, want to generate something that has uh, the whole alphabet in one sentence. Uh, so let's go in and look, look at some of the effects that we can do with text. So if I go into our animation presets here, and let me scroll up synthetics and you'll see so animation presets let's go down to text and here are a whole bunch of effects that we can put in on text and so let's look at animate in for example and I can go in and I can fade up and flip so I have my uh, you want your playhead where you want your effects to start so let me put the playhead in the beginning and fade up and flip. I'm just going to go in and double click that. And then if we scroll across and hit play, there you can see it's fading the text in and flips it up. So it essentially makes 3D text out of that. And one word at a time, it's bringing it in and flips it up. Now let me undo that. And uh, let's fly in from the bottom up. So if I do that, you can see the text is flying in from the bottom up. And it's the same kind of thing uh, with the... Uh, you have some parameters, okay? Uh, it depends on which uh, effect that you're doing, the, the degree of control that you have. Uh, let's see, we, so we have uh, a start and an end, and we have an offset. And we can go in and we can base it on characters. Uh, we can base it on words. We can do it on whole lines. So you can go in and you can modify how this effect is going to behave and what it's going to do. So right now, 
it's on characters let's see if we put that on words there you can see it's picking whole words all right so you've got a fair degree of control and uh, you can go in and change how this works and then obviously you can go in and create uh, layers on top you can add blurs you can change the color of the text so there's a lot of things that you can add on top of this in terms of uh, the different kind of effects that you can get with adding onto the text uh, one of the other effects that's really fun to play with is working with particles so let's take a look at that real quick so I'm just gonna delete these and let's get a new solid put that in and go over here and type particle and I want to use uh, the, the main one that's built in that you have access to is called particle world and then there's another one called CC particle systems too but let's look at particle world so I'm going to take that drag it in and put it on top and this again is tough to see because it's transparent so let's add another layer and give ourselves a background that's black so we can see things put the background here this is my particle layer so if I go in and I start simulating particles let's look at the comp all right I start simulating particles we can see the particles that are being generated and actually I'm going to take this and shrink this down some so I repeat a lot faster and here's my controls for my particles so I have a thing called grids and guides all right and this is how you set it up and uh, the uh, birth rate has to do with how rapid particles are born right now it's at two I can jack that up and so I'm you can see how that changed I'm getting a whole lot of particles cut that way back down and the particle generation is a lot sparser longevity has to do with how long do the particles live uh, at the moment I believe this is in seconds yeah and so uh, they're living for one second I can have them die fairly quick and you can see that if I cut this way down uh, they're dying before they even reach the end of the screen and if I jack this way up they're li living way past uh, before they go out of view on the screen uh, the producer has to do with uh, uh, the positions of where it's uh, uh, essentially where the the emitter is is generating things from uh, the physics has to do with what type so we have an explosive one I can make it directional along an axis okay so at the moment it's uh, directional on the uh, x-axis uh, I can make it uh, twirly all right so we can see that I can make it fire so it's going up So you can see it's kind of making like a cone there. So you have a lot of uh, control over how the particles are generated. Uh, the particle itself can be in numerous things, all right? So at the moment, we're making a line. It can be stars, a shaded sphere. You can play games with the colors. So this is the colors at birth, the colors at death, all right? and. Uh, with particle world you can even make textures so if we wanted to if we went in and we had a uh, textured quad polygon I can go in and we don't have textures at the moment because we don't have a layer for it but if I went in my project and I've got this smoke so I put the smoke layer in there and this is just a picture okay of some smoke so let's go back and look at my comp and uh, go back to my particles my effects and controls and say my texture layer is my smoke and now if I start playing this you can see 
that the uh, my picture is essentially these are called sprites my picture has been overlaid on top of the particles and depending upon what kind of picture you use there's some interesting effects you can get with that uh, so anyway this is uh, a way that you can you can actually generate fire this way you can generate smoke this way uh, so this is one way you can uh, put essentially explosions into your uh, uh, projects if that's uh, something that you want or you want to see a ray gun or you want to see uh, uh, anyway there's lots of things that you can do with particles uh, I wanted to end with at least just demoing a couple of the things that are in some very advanced particle generators. Well, you won't have this in class, but I at least wanted to show, show them to you. Uh, so let me uh, get rid of these. And I've got a plugin for After Effects called uh, uh, Trap Code Particular and particular is an extremely advanced uh, particle generator and it's pretty amazing what you can do with it and so if we go down here to RG trap code uh, there's a number of uh, uh, paid for plugins uh, particular in general is one form is another one and uh, Mirror are also some pretty amazing plugins with what they can do, but today I just want to show particular. So let's put particular on here. And uh, same kind of thing disappears. So let's get a new layer so we can see the background. Put that in there. And particular has a designer. So I can go in here and I can design my what I want to do with how I want particles to behave and uh, let me uh, shrink this down a little bit so this views better on the capture here so there's a number of presets I can go in here and I can look at all kinds of different presets that they have built in so there's some uh, uh, there's a viewer here that shows what it looks like uh, I can get some interesting background effects uh, that's pretty cool uh, we can get uh, explosions. I can get debris explosions. I can get smoke going out. So you can see, I can get a fire burst. All right, so that's that's pretty impressive. And uh, this is all built into the particle system that is in particular. Uh, let's go in. Uh, let's go back up here and look at this uh, pastel dots. And on this once I've picked that then I can go in and I have a number of controls here on color and opacity and how things are changed and how it emits and uh, all of that kind of stuff let's just say I like that and we'll say apply and now if I go in and uh, I hit play this takes a little bit, takes some horsepower here for this to run, so it has to go into the RAM cache. And let me hit stop. We'll go that far. Okay, so you get an idea of what that's doing. And how that's generating and it's all done with the uh, trap code particular and like I said you saw some of the other things I was able to generate with that you can make explosions and smoke and bombs and all kinds of cool things uh, that is a fairly expensive plugin but if you graduate from here and you start working in a studio or doing freelance uh, the uh, trap code plugins uh, from Red Giant software are pretty amazing and it's pretty cool the stuff you can do with that uh, there's another plugin that I use. Uh, it's called Element 3D. It's uh, developed by a company called Video uh, Copilot, which is uh, uh, Andrew Kramer. Uh, you probably have seen much of Andrew's work. Andrew did a lot of the uh, uh, texting and titling that was done on the uh, new Star Trek movies. And I think if you've seen anything on Sci-Fi Channel, you'll recognize a lot of his work in uh, a number of the movies and, and title, title work that was done on many of those. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at uh, Element 3D. So delete those, get a new layer. 
call this background. And new solid, let's call this 3D. And so if I go down here to video copilot, there's element. So let me put element 3D on there. And like uh, trap code particular, element uh, 3D has uh, its own scene setup. So let me click on that and it opens up a window. Let me shrink this down so we can view this better. All right. And so what I can do with Element 3D, they have some built-in 3D models, but the thing, one thing that I really like doing is I can import my own models. So uh, I've got a model right now of uh, just something I use in 3D, and this is uh, an object I just call a knot, which is a three-dimensional knot. And uh, I've exported this in what's called an OBJ format, and I've stuck it on my desktop, so I'm going to import that. And so I click on import and there's my not OBJ. I import the 3D object. Just take the uh, presets the way they are. Okay, now it's a little bit small so I need to increase the scale. And we can go in and look at this. And you can see Uh, it's brought that object in and it truly is a 3d object and one of the other things that's very cool with element is I can go in and I can put materials on this so I can go into presets and I can look at materials uh, let's see what we got here in metal and uh, let me put a, a brush metal on that so I put a brush metal material on it and then I can light my environment with uh, uh, HDR lighting. So let me go in here and pick some uh, HDR lighting. Uh, I'll just pick that. And you can see now I've lit the object with an environment. You can see the environment being in reflected on that brush chrome surface. And it truly is a 3D object. So if I say OK and bring it in, there it is. We have that. Now to view this in 3D, I need to add a camera. So I'm going to go in layer new and I'll add myself a camera and let me go in and change my view and I want to take the camera and I want to bring that so I can zoom this in so I can uh, that's not what I want to do let's see go back to my two views Select the camera, drag that in, and there, that's what I want to do. I want to zoom that camera in. So I can zoom the camera in, and you can see this is truly a 3D object, and it is because we can go over here, and I go to Element, and I go to World Transformations, and I can take this and I can rotate this object. So see that there. So this object is truly a 3D object. And After Effects, through the use of this plugin, understands that it's a 3D object. And I can translate it and bring it into the space here and uh, have it be lit by an environment and I can see that environment reflected on the object and I can make this interact with my other things. So this is a way to truly build in 3D, to bring in 3D objects into After Effects and have After Effects work with a real 3D object in your uh, essentially 2.5D uh, composition that you work with in, uh, in After Effects. So that's uh, Element 3D and I showed you particular. We sh talked a little bit about uh, working with text and adding uh, animation on top of the text and doing working with particles and some of the pre-built in animations. So hopefully that'll be enough to get us started here and we can work with some animations on this week's homework. It's been Phil with Phil Effects. Thanks a lot.